I'm Tyler Fisher. I'm Camden Fitzpatrick. I'm Isabella. I'm Seth Fisher, and this is Fleet Friday. So the history, history of the Rapid Rescue Patrol uh, started in 1957 when our founder Stan Bush uh, found the need or discovered that there was a need for search and rescue in the state of Colorado. At the time there was only one other search and rescue team in the state uh, which was Rocky Mountain Rescue. So he decided you know, that we should probably form a team. Uh, what he ran into was there wasn't a whole lot of adults at the time that had the interest or the time that they could dedicate uh, to a volunteer organization. Uh, so since he was a teacher at Littleton High School and a troop leader uh, for the Boy Scouts of America, he decided to ask the youth if they were any interest, uh, and that's where Rapid Rescue was formed. At the time, it was all-male um, organization from high school students um, around the, the Littleton area, and it's grown from there in the last 64 years to what it is today, to where we have both male and female members. Uh, we provide search and rescue for primarily Arapahoe and Elbert County in the state of Colorado. However, our team travels all over the state because we still do find that um, it is easier for um, basically high school age students and stuff to get out of school a lot easier than it is for a lot of us adults to leave work. Um, and so teams around the state of Colorado will call us and uh, we'll travel all over um, doing that. But uh, we've been based out of Littleton um, for the entire 64 years and for a good portion of it probably since the 70s um, we've been based out of um, it was Littleton Station 12 now South Metro Station 12 uh, between two different buildings um, and that's where we are today so the the relationship was built with Littleton Fire at the time to provide this service since we were there and it's grown since the merges to where Rapid Rescue Patrol still provides the service for Rehab 12 um, on any fire scenes or major incidents. And I'll pass it over to some of the members uh, to give you a tour of this uh, unique apparatus. Well, hi guys. Uh, basically this is a 1995 um, International. Uh, it's been bounced around from different fire departments and just kind of all over the place in the years it's been in service. We've only had it for a couple years now, I think two or three. Um, and it carries all the uh, necessities and the equipment that we need to do rehab for South Metro. And we can go ahead and start in the driver's side compartment. Um, obviously this is where the driver sits. Um, you can control like the PTO generator, um, the lights, all that important stuff. And then um, on your passenger side uh, is more your navigator and your communication. So you need to talk to METCOM, you need to talk to Med One. you need to talk to different agencies that we might be able to need to get in contact with. Um, that's your person. We also have the MDT, so they'll be operating that and kind of showing us where we need to go and how to get there. Alrighty, uh, well basically this truck is a little bit different to start. Um, instead of having to turn the key off, you actually have to pull this little uh, lever, which is the engine stop. So if this is forward, you can't start the truck. Um, it has air brakes, so it's a lot different than driving like your personal car. Um, it's also diesel, so it's very loud. Um, some of the newer diesel trucks have the diesel death fluid, and they're just not as loud as they are, but this is a 95, so it's very loud. So we have these, um, the David Clark system, and uh, these make it so it's almost like a little radio. Um, but you have a headset for it. So you can actually talk to the people in the cab and actually hear you know, important information that needs to be said. Um, and then if you're the passenger, their radio connects directly to this. Um, and this is kind of like your key up button. So it does the same thing as this on the 800, except you push that and um, it keys up the radio so you can talk directly into your mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. And then you have your MDT here. Um, but basically this has different settings. Uh, so Metcom can see where this computer is, you know, anywhere. They can track it. 
it's not like live tracking, but it's pretty close. Um, you know, you have your different buttons that you push, so in quarters, which means you're back at the station. Maybe we're refilling bottles after a lot of fires we have. We use almost all of our 54 bottles that we carry. Um, so it takes a couple hours to fill all of those with the cascade system in the station. Um, so that way you push that when you're not ready to go back in service, but you're still back at the station. Then you have uh, your in service, which is you're ready to go on another call. All right, now we're gonna go through the compartments here on rehab. First, we're gonna start down here. These are gonna be our wheel chocks. Whenever we're parked for a long time using our PTO, if we're on a hill, some sort of weird angle, we like to use those just as a precaution. Starting here, these are gonna be our cascade bottles. We have a SCBA cascade on the other side that we'll go through here in a little bit. Yeah, so an SCBA cascade is basically how we fill bottles. All the stations have a similar setup, but they usually have a compressor. These are just cascade bottles. So basically, we'll start with the cascade bottles that are the lowest compared to the SCBA bottle. So then we can fill the SCBA bottles on scene. It's very important, especially when we're working with other agencies such as Aurora and West Metro. For South Metro, we can usually just swap out bottles. But for those other agencies, it's nice to be able to fill up their bottles when they provide mutual aid to South Metro. Um, up top here we have some tarps, just various equipment, and a toolbox that can be helpful for when stuff breaks down on scene and stuff like that. This is going to be the controls to our command line up top. We can do a demonstration of that here also soon. If you're looking here, these are going to be our stream lights. They're really helpful on scene, just setting up some additional lighting, obviously. We have the big light tower up top, but it's nice to have some more flexible options as far as lighting go. Okay, before we fire the truck up here, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through this because when the truck's on and the PTO is running, it can be really loud. So this is gonna be the controls to our command light up top. Um, three different light settings. Uh, turn, and then raise up and down. And then you can also turn the green flashing light on, which would signify the command post. This is going to be the first side of our SCBA slide out. There's 44 SCBA bottles on this slide out. Um, we use these to swap out on scene. So basically, when firefighters use a bunch of bottles on scene, they'll hand us those empty bottles, we'll hand them the equivalent full bottles, and then we'll take those empty bottles back here to 12s and fill those up. Down here we have a couple of various things. This is going to be our med kit for when we're taking vitals for rehab. This is we have blood pressure cuffs, stethoscopes, prep pads, some headlights for taking vitals at night. This here is just going to be a bag of different nitrile gloves. And then we have a whole load of these SCBA bottle straps. So basically, if we have two of these, it allows us to carry four bottles at once, which is very helpful. Especially if we have to park the truck far away from the scene, we have to walk those bottles in. Uh, we have just a general decon kit that all the frontline apparatus in South Metro carry. Cancer prevention is obviously very important, so we have these on all frontline units. It's not used for us very often, but more as a backup to other units. This here is going to be more of our personal decon kit, since we're not going into the fires, but we're still around those same contaminants. We have stuff like fire wipes and just seat covers and various things that we might need. We just have a clipboard to help fill out vitals. So 
this here is our SCBA bottle slide out. It's where we carry 44 of our air bottles. Um, they're all at 5,500 PSI, so we can easily swap out on the scene. And when we pull one out to use it, when we put an empty one back in, we'll usually just cross this strap so we know which ones are empty. So it's been mentioned a couple times that we have a PTO on this truck, which is basically a generator that runs off the same fuel as the truck. It's going to be one of the many outlets we have for that generator. This here is going to be where we keep all of our PPE and our turnout gear. Uh, we usually don't use it too much during the summer months unless we're inside a structure help assisting the investigators, but it's very nice to have in the winter, keeps us nice and warm, also keeps us safe, because it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes when we want to get crews back in service, we'll remain on scene to assist the investigators, so we need the same PPA, we have some N95s in the truck, and we have the turnout gear and gloves and everything we need to keep us safe. We have a table down here, so when we're taking vitals we can set up this table and I'll show you here in a little bit we have some buckets that we use as seats so this is just going to be one side of this compartment we'll go through the other side in a little bit all right this compartment we're going to have one of our coolers these coolers are 50 percent Gatorade 50 percent water we restock these after every call we have two of these coolers on this truck we have one on this side one on the other side it's very nice to be able to hand these out to crews. Um, so at South Metro, safety officers carry a small cooler with them, but when we come to a large incident, we're able to provide a lot of snacks, a lot of drinks. Um, this is gonna be one of the two cord reels on this truck. So when we have our PTO fired up, if we can't just plug something directly into the truck, we have a 200 foot cord reel here with some pigtails and an electric rewind, as you can see right here. Uh, these are going to be the buckets I mentioned in the other compartment. These are going to be what we can use as seats to take vitals and carry snacks on wildland incidents and other stuff like that. Back here we're going to have two of our portable scene lights. Um, these can connect to the two cord reels we have on both sides of the truck. So. These are very helpful when we're far away from the truck and can't use the light tower. And we can also use them hooked up directly to the truck because we have power outlets for both of them on the back of the truck. So this here is kind of be our general compartment. We have a propane heater here, so we have the propane tank for it, the heater, um, some more tarps. Tarps are just really useful, especially if we're working on a dirty scene to just be able to have some places to st stuff down to decontaminate it. Um, and these two orange boxes here, we just have a general assortment of turnout gloves and just leather gloves. When we're working with hose and stuff like that, it can be pretty nasty. Right here, we're gonna have these two portable trash cans. These are really nice to have on scene so that trash doesn't just get left everywhere people actually throw their trash away after they get drinks or snacks from us. Back here we're going to have two sets of pop-up cones. They're really nice to have if we're working an incident where we're off of a major road or working in traffic. So that way we can keep people away from our apparatus, especially when we have our SCBA slide out. Right here, these are going to be our two hose bars. So five inch hose is very heavy light or very heavy dry. So when it's wet, it's super heavy. So we have these bars that we can slide through the five inch and carry it with two people. Um, up here we also have a little dolly for if we're carrying the coolers for a really long way. Uh, we have a set of irons right here, which really doesn't get used super often. It's more of just a backup to the frontline crews. Um, we have some shovels and some various brooms back there, which like I mentioned earlier, sometimes we help the fire investigators. So those can assist us inside those scenes. Um, this here is gonna be our SCBA bottle tarp. You've probably seen it in some pictures on South Metro incidents. 
This is where we keep all of our full and empty SCBA bottles so that way they stay organized. Um, this here is just going to be a bucket of towels. They're useful on scene if we have to keep people warm or dry stuff down. Um, this here is going to be just a sprayer. Obviously during the winter and these cold spring months, we're going to want this propane heater and this propane tank. But in the summer it gets really hot. It's nice to be able to just spray people down with some cold water. Okay, we're gonna finish off with the last side of rehab. And this is where we keep our second cooler. Um, this has more drinks, and then we have a snack bucket up here, and um, just extra stuff like wipes, paper towels. This is our cloths bag, and then we have extra water and Gatorade um, for the firefighters back here. And this is the other side to our bunker gear with all of our different sizes on this side as well. We have a table, an extra table, and an extra table on that side as well. Um, and each of these little numbers just designate the size of bunker gear. Like a small person like me would wear size one while a big person would wear size 10. <laughs> and then here is our other side to our bottles. They've already gone through that a little bit. Um, we also have some more bottles down there. Okay, and then this last part right here is our Cascade. On the other side is our Cascade bottles. And um, this just fills up our bottles using pressure. Um, and there's, these are our banks, are those bottles back there. And basically we hook our bottles up to these little knobs and this will turn around um, so that if anything bad happens, it'll be inside the machine. Um, and then we just use the pressure to fill up our bottles and then give them back to the firefighters while we're on scene. But this can only fill so many bottles, so after a while we do have to go back to 12s and refill our air tanks and also refill the bottles with the cascade inside bottles.